cold, desolate. Only the toughest survive life at the edge of the Arctic. There is no room for error in this climate. But it offers a way of life to those who can cope. For centuries, man has lived off this land and its animals, deploying equal toughness and adaptation. But with the arrival of technology, traditional ways are being lost, and so too is the unique connection with this land. This year, one father wants to give his son the chance to choose between old and new. He will train him as a hunter. For Noah and Logan, this may be the last chance to keep their link to the land alive. Logan's home is on an icy wilderness called Southampton Island in the far north of Canada at the mouth of the Hudson Bay. It is so cold that it is surrounded by a frozen sea of ice for nine months of the year. To us, it looks like a wasteland, a frozen desert. It's dominated by the movement and accumulation of snow and ice throughout the year. Neither land or sea escapes the North Pole's icy grip. So what on earth could live here? Some of the most extreme survivors of the animal kingdom. They have found a living where others cannot, and the same is true for the people of this island, like Noah and his family. People of Southampton Island don't need to rely on the past anymore. They have heated homes, snowmobiles, running water and TV. But these things are expensive and the community is isolated. The population is getting younger too and about half of them are still at school and so not earning a living. Noah is taking his son out of school early today because he wants to take him on a long journey. It's the only way he can offer his son a choice about his future. Logan's grandparents and ancestors were all hunters, but he doesn't need to live off the land. Only 40 years ago, there would be no other way to survive here. No one knows that the old ways are hard, but if Logan has never learned to survive in the wild, how can he choose which way to live his life in the future? On the ice, adults and children used to work together to build their homes, and everyone had a role to play in the success of the family. They all knew what was needed from them. Noah wants to teach some of this self-reliance to Logan. His wife has made the clothes for their journey from the fur of animals Noah has caught. They are perfect for the conditions and cost them nothing. Logan's watertight boots are made from seal skin. Hey. Trousers made out of polar bear fur are the warmest option for an Inuit hunter. The soles of Logan's boots are also made from bear fur to raise his feet off the snow and keep them warm. His parka is made from caribou fur, which is a great natural insulator. Their journey is going to be long. When they finally reach their destination, they will be marooned by snow melt. Noah will teach Logan how to hunt for their food, and so they carry little, traveling light with only one sledge. They are staking a lot on Noah's experience. 
This is a rite of passage, and it's time for the family to say goodbye to Logan, the boy. His mother and sister won't see him again until the summer, three months from now. Noah also says goodbye at his mother's grave. She understood life on the land, and Noah used to hunt especially for her. She liked her meat prepared the old way. He respects his mother very much for the way she brought him up. Like most children his age on Southampton Island, Logan has never been away from home this long before. There's no means of communication and no one lives where they're traveling to, so there will be no contact from now on. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for both of them. Logan hopes to see a polar bear and hunt his first seal. And Noah wants his son to feel the connection with the land but nothing is guaranteed in this icy wilderness. Wildlife used to roam all over the island, but now they must travel farther afield. They will have to travel 800 kilometers across the tundra to the remote far side of their island, where Noah's mother used to live. This is their destination. It might look bleak to us, but it's a place where some holes in the frozen ice stay open year round and give animals a chance. It's the place where Noah's mother told him long ago he could become a great hunter. And of course, the polar bear knows this place too. He crosses the bridge of ice to find the cracks where sea mammals come to breathe. Even though adult walruses can weigh 1,700 kilos, the walrus must always be on the lookout. The polar bear is its most dangerous enemy. Only the polar bear has the courage to take on a walrus who is twice his size. When walruses get spooked, they dive deep under the ice and depend on their thick skulls to break through to safety. Their skin can be four centimeters thick and helps them deal with the tough life in the frozen north. In the water, the walrus has the advantage. This is not a good time to hunt. On the ice, the bear goes hungry. But he is a patient hunter, and his time will come. Walruses are very protective mothers of their single offspring. The calf can swim from birth but rarely leaves her side. On the surface, her calf is vulnerable, so she keeps it underwater, even when she nurses it, which she may continue to do for two years. Scientists speculated that walruses nurse their young underwater, but this is the first time this tender relationship has ever been caught on film. is strong, and it needs to be, as it will take three years for the calf to learn the knowledge needed to ensure its survival. The polar bear's persistence will be rewarded eventually. As long as the walrus keeps to the water, her calf is safe from polar bears.
Two days into their three-month trip, at 160 kilometers from home, Noah and Logan arrive at a frozen lake. It's time to stock up on food for the rest of the journey. The ice covering this lake is only 60 centimeters thick, so they are fortunate. It could have been almost two meters. If their luck continues, they will find Arctic char underneath. Inuit hunters have perfected a technique for casting nets under the ice sheet. This is Logan's first test. If he doesn't get this right, they will have wasted valuable time and energy. In the Arctic, success is never easy. Even for animals so at home in the cold, nothing is certain. A mother polar bear and her cubs left their den just days ago. After four months in hibernation, she is starving and must find food soon. But the cubs face danger away from the den. The mother must be patient while her cubs grow strong. She will stay with them for three years and teach them where to find food and shelter in the frozen wilderness. They depend on her completely to survive. Just like the bear cubs, Logan relies on his parent to teach him how to find food and shelter in the open wastes of the island. The building methods and design perfected by Noah's ancestors have never needed improvement. For Logan, finding shelter in 80 km an hour winds at 30 below is vital. Learning how to put the building blocks of an igloo together will be one of the most important skills he can learn from his culture.
After a 24-hour day, they are thankful for the comfort of their igloo. <laughs> they don't have much time to shelter. The next day, Noah and Logan leave their igloo before dawn. Today, they feel lucky. The nets are heavy. They have a good catch. Arctic char are the most northerly freshwater fish in the world, and each of these weighs about two and a half kilos. They freeze solid within seconds of contact with the cold air. These temperatures are dangerous for bare skin. It's taken Noah years to get used to the bitter cold on his hands. By dawn, they have a hundred fish stored in their freezer. The Arctic char is a member of the salmon family, so the meat is very good and will feed them for the weeks to come. And, if they're lucky, they will have some left to take home. Already, Noah and Logan must abandon their igloo and frozen lake and continue their journey towards the sea. polar bear and her cubs travel in the same direction. The cubs are small but can run fast. They will follow their mother to the ocean oasis where she will finally be able to hunt food for them. The weather is changing and Noah and Logan's days on the frozen tundra are numbered. It seems strange but snow means the weather is becoming warmer. Wet snow will help melt the frozen ground cover. Exposed tundra is good news for hungry Canada geese and plovers, but bad news for the snowmobile. They must leave the land before they get stuck and make their way down to the sea. Once over the ridge of the mountain, they finally see their destination. It's like a blue jewel in the monotonous black and white landscape. Surrounded by open water, this place is an oasis for life. Passing the open water, they reach the place where Noah's mother, Logan's grandmother, grew up on the shore of Southampton Island. Even though the temperature in May is still around zero, they will only use a tent for shelter here. The fur of Arctic animals is incredibly insulating, so using the skins for clothing means that Noah and Logan can stay warm in the frozen north, even under canvas. Down 
tent well, a small but important task. For a month, it will be their home, while they make the most of the new hunting ground. step to becoming a hunter. If he is to live off the land, he will need it for food and clothing. Of course, they can buy clothes and food at home, but everything is expensive in the isolated north. Tomorrow, Logan will have a chance to test his skills against his ancestors and hunt the first seal of the season. This is Logan's big day. They set out towards the ocean across the frozen sea ice in the bay in search of seals. Adult seals can hear them from beneath the ice. So their best chance is to look for the young and curious ones. Seals are nervous animals and have many breathing holes in the ice to escape down. During the winter, ringed seals live in darkness under the ice, but now they're beginning to molt and spend less time feeding in the water, preferring to spend their time on the ice. At the surface, they have learned to be cautious. But in springtime, they cannot resist climbing out to sunbathe. On top of the ice is where they are most vulnerable. is also looking for seals on the ice, not far from Noah and Logan. This is too good an opportunity to miss. They find the bear's fresh tracks easily, and Noah shows Logan how to read the snow. The size and softness of the print shows that it was a big male who passed here not long ago. The polar bear walks like a human on the soles of its feet rather than on its toes. Hey. By following the tracks, they can see what the bear has been up to. they find an opened seal den. The bear was here, looking for baby seals born under the snow. The den is empty, 
There is no blood. Noah can decipher events from the signs around the den when the seal sensed that the bear was coming. From the tracks, it looks like the bear was standing very close to the den before it struck. Bears use strong senses of smell and hearing to close in on seals hidden beneath the snow. Maybe the seal heard something or sensed danger. The bear knows at times like these, it needs to stay still and quiet. Spooked, the seal dived for its hole. Hunting seals takes experience. Smelling the seal is one thing, but knowing exactly what time to strike is another. All this is written in the snow, if, like Noah, you know how to read it. From the tracks, Noah knows that the bear is near, and he really wants Logan to get a chance to watch him. Understanding the ways of animals firsthand is part of his training as a hunter. He's not too far away. But he has spotted them. It is rare for these two hunters to come into such close proximity. From here, Noah can see the bear's personality. Planning an escape, the bear dives underwater to search for a way out another hole to swim to. Maybe if the snowmobile wasn't here, he would be braver. The long days of June bring the most intense sunlight on Southampton Island, and this takes its toll on the ice. This will have a big effect on what Noah and Logan can do now. 24-hour daylight melts the frozen harbor. In these milder days, Noah must quickly dry their fish before it rots. It must last them the journey home. The brown face of the Arctic fox says that summer is coming. Wah! The fox is a tireless hunter and scavenger patrolling the shoreline. It sees everything that goes on. A polar bear often wanders the bay 
but he never bothers Noah or Logan. He smells something better farther down the ice. The carcass of a whale has been stinking for a day. Maybe it had already died, and another bear dragged it out of the sea. The smell is irresistible to a mother and her cubs. dominant and his reaction unpredictable. She's taking a risk bringing her cubs this close to him, but she needs the meat and her cubs are hungry. She must be sure of the best time to approach. If she gets this wrong, he could badly injure her or kill the cubs. When he moves away from the carcass, he seems full and sleepy. The mother is up and ready. They may not have eaten in days. She carefully circles around, passing the male downwind, so she will be able to watch him while she eats. For any animal in these extreme conditions, sharing does not come easily. The little bears eat in a rush. Food is scarce and competition is everywhere. There is never much time. The male probably isn't hungry, but he demands respect. The mother gets the message and her cubs follow the lead. It must be so hard to leave the meal behind, but better to go hungry than end up dead. An expert of survival, the mother bear has taught her cubs to avoid conflict. Reading the silent languages of this land is an important skill for a hunter. The days are growing shorter again, and the nights return. Although they haven't seen anyone else for weeks, Noah and Logan have not been lonely. Learning the stories of the land has kept them busy, and they've enjoyed each other's company. <laughs> the sea ice is flooded, and time is running out for Logan's greatest challenge. The sea ice on the bay is breaking up, and it won't last for long. Luckily for Logan, it's a good day to hunt seal. The sun is high, the wind is right, and there are plenty of seals basking on the ice. Before he sets off on his own, Noah gives Logan his last instructions. He must approach the seal slowly. The rifle is only a tool. It is the hunter who must do the stalking. To be successful, Logan must be aware of the sound of his footsteps, the direction of the wind, and the position of the sun.
When the seal looks up, Logan must not move. When the seal naps, then he can move closer. From here on, Logan's judgment is his own. It's the point of no return. He has only one shot. If he hits in the wrong place, the seal will be lost. Noah must feel relieved and is very happy for Logan. He has provided them with food and is one step closer to becoming an Enoch hunter, a man who knows how to live from the land as their ancestors did. It is a nice fat seal and will feed them well. Noah says, Aoyungi, my Ungnuk. Good job, son. Your mother will be proud. Noah and Logan celebrate his first hunt. They can hardly wait. Fresh food is still a big deal. Eating seal meat makes them feel good. For Noah, it has always been that way. His mother used to say that when they ate seal, they become more alive. It gives them energy and valuable protection from the cold. In this harsh world, it is a luxury. When they have meat, it keeps them warm, and for a moment, they forget the hardships of their lives. Noah and Logan must move on quickly. The sea ice is no longer their friend. Beneath them, the dark ocean is yawning, and they must rush to cross the open cracks. Behind them, the ice platform shifts with the power of the wind and the currents. They must get clear of it before its yearly breakup transforms everything. For the seal, the new season is a good time. Now they are harder for polar bears to hunt. Bears start to go hungry. The walrus also suffers as its world becomes too small. Without the sheets of sea ice, they're driven to land. This is the season when the walruses are most vulnerable. The bear's power shifts easily from ice to water. Polar bears may travel for days in and out of the sea, following a scent. return to rocky haulouts around the island. They pass on the knowledge of these sites from animal to animal over generations.
They haul out onto solid ground where they will stay for many days to rest. They are clumsy and exposed on land. Each one claims their own space on the rocks and they let their tusks do the talking. Those with bigger tusks tend to be more dominant and get the best positions. Broken tusks can indicate lower rank and the worst choice of haul-out for the unlucky walrus. In July, this side of Southampton Island is mostly free from snow and ice. On the tundra, the summer season comes to life. Logan take their lives in their hands as they search for a haul out where walruses come onto the land. Although they don't commonly attack people, the huge bulk of a male walrus could do a lot of damage. But Noah and Logan want to get close. approach from downwind, but somehow they still sense them. Walrus have very poor eyesight and this lets them come face to face. time as a hunter, Noah has seen many remarkable sights on the island. Once, he saw a great polar bear, or Nanook, who had found a way to get close to walruses. The polar bear is the only animal brave enough to challenge a walrus. The bear tries to panic the colony off the rocks, hoping that a young animal is left behind. His plan is a good one. The walrus are panicking, but the bear remains calm and careful, watching for any opportunity. finds a calf abandoned in the chaos. All the walrus can do is watch helplessly from the water. Walrus are not the bear's usual prey. But he is an opportunist. Polar bears usually hunt only seals, but this one has learned to hunt in a new way. Without ice, Noah and Logan cannot move. On an island near the North Pole, the summer season leaves them restless. They want to hunt, but even caribou fur isn't good enough for clothes yet. They must wait a few weeks longer before they can return. They have shared so much on their journey. Now they look forward to the time when they can travel across the frozen land again. After three months away, Logan will be able to decide which way of living means the most to him.